Vim comes from Autodesk in 2002 after the acquisition of the product Revit and we have a problem. All systems are open to IT except CAD and of course Autodesk then pursued Markov under under the umbrella of IntelliCAD later since 1995. We now have Open DWG and now Revit since 2017. So now all major companies without exception use these SDKs. They use now no BIM, IFC plugins, cloud or BIM 360. That means without exception all CAD houses use for interoperability ODA SDK or CAD Exchange SDK and no one uses IFC. Suddenly thanks to SDK our data open. That means we don't have to worry about API, about this question, how to access the data with CPA, XML, GLTF in USD format or in IFC or in Excel plus Collada format. The all project data is now the same. We get the same results only with what effort. Do you need 100 lines of code, 150 lines of code to come to this table? Filtering or grouping data or creating a pie chart or a bar chart. All of this is just a line of code. With just one sentence, you get the same results. That means we don't need to learn Python or new libraries now. We simply write in Spanish or in English or in German. Companies that do not work with data today, unfortunately, must. they might fear for their existence later. Do we need BIM for this? Maybe not. Perhaps. My name is Artem Boyko. I am a qualified miner who transitioned from mining to data mining. I am the founder of the project's big data construction and data-driven construction. The focus of my work is the question of why we have so many concepts and abbreviations today in construction that actually have nothing to do with construction. And the main question is why labor productivity in our industry has decreased, while other industries show that it has doubled or tripled. We have dozens of formats, hundreds of concepts, and thousands of tools that we are supposed to work with today, which are supposed to help us to work faster, but they don't. And to understand the foundation, I started in in 2020 to map the software products and concepts. In this map, the ideas connected with software developers, with concepts to understand where the journey started and where the journey is heading. This map and then all other links can also be seen. Also at the end of this presentation, you can scan this QR code. Today we are talking about BIM, BIM originated from Autodesk in 2002 after the purchase of the product Revit from two CTOs by Autodesk. This PDF white paper building information modeling was then Autodesk with the product Revit placed there with feedback from architects who have already tried Revit. This is a screenshot from Autodesk website. This BIM concept comes from BOM because Leonid writes, the founder of Revit has been working on a product since the 80s. Pro Engineer PTC, which was founded with Samuel Geisberg in the 80s. And with this bomb, it was in the 80s, already connecting CAD with ERP systems and E-bomb, bomb, P-bomb, M-bomb, you have Autodesk. Converted to BIM and has since benefited from this BIM story. And Open BIM is now indeed also the new topic in Europe because Obermeier from Munich has also actually... Munich Airport was built... In Munich, they searched for new formats, then invented IFC with TU. Munich then brought the topic to America with the help of the CEO of HRK in the year 1994. Leonhard Obermeier registered the EEC format and then transferred the rights to Autodesk. And Patrick McClamey helped at that time to bring everything under the umbrella of Autodesk is registered. And back then, in the year, they founded the Interoperability Alliance for Data Exchange today it's called Building Smart. In 2012, Graphisoft also saw this this whole journey with Beam, with Revit, and then together with Trimble Open BIM Marketing Company started. This is an official screenshot from the Graphisoft page back then. It literally says, "Open BIM is a marketing campaign initiated by Graphisoft and Tikla." And what do we have today? We work today with the IFC format, which was originally registered under the umbrella of Autodesk Germany. Then we have Building Smart, which was founded by Autodesk, also White Paper BIM, and Open BIM from Archicad and Trimble throughout the entire history. How the products were created back then are Graphisoft, Archicad, Nemechek, Autodesk itself, AutoCAD, and how it all connects. I have already edited a video, a 20-minute video on YouTube. And now let's go not deep into the history. Our problem today is that the major companies are on gone public since the 80s by Autodesk and until Nemechek now for 20 years. And the problem is that now these houses are not managed by CEOs or startup founders who developed the products at that time, but by the people, the hired managers 
who are employed by financial companies and the larger CAD houses are buying products today and CAD BIM tools or patents in its niche. And they do not compete with each other. And that is our problem because Autodesk and the big companies like Graphisoft, they cannot develop new products for us because they just bought them. This is, for example, like with Revit. Revit was purchased in 2002. Still part of the code in Revit is still language documents, what is not English. And okay, they can't create new ones for us inventing tools. Therefore, they create the entire landscape for us, such as ERP, EPM, 4D, 5D, where we can processes should be adapted in these systems. And as Carol Bartz, the CEO of Autodesk in 2005, we actually don't sell CAD products later. We only sell lifecycle management or process management software. And that means for every engineer who is, when something is created with CAD programs, there are then 10 more engineers who need to work with the data and what does this landscape look like? In every construction company, medium-sized companies has hundreds of systems in its landscapes. Larger ones like Zublin have thousands of different systems that need to be connected and through which data should flow from CapEx to ERP and then CAFM systems. And here we have a problem. All systems are open to IT except CAD and BIM solutions. We need BIM software to access the data. And that is what we have for naturally solved by CAD vendor with closed BIM or open BIM. With closed BIM, we work in open Autodesk Forge or with Autodesk Cloud. In open BIM, we pay monthly or annually for Solibri or Desite. In both cases, we have many dependencies on CAD products. That means no matter what we want to create or automate, we are dependent on APIs, on packages, different products from CAD manufacturers. That means every time it comes to closed BIM or open BIM is leaving, we pay the CAD vendor when we start the program to export anything as IFC or as SVF file in BIM 360, we pay for access to data. And when it comes to 4D, 5D, and when it comes to quality, we pay anyway for this bridge between open BIM and closed BIM, because I think many know that the IFC quality is not sufficient for many cases. Regarding 4D, 5D, IFC generally comes from STEP, which comes from IJS. Back then there was punch cards. And IFC is not an active format for modern CAD programs. And actually people who were involved in the creation of IFC at that time traveling around the world with Obermeyer, for example, and registered IFC, for example, for Germany, CPI, XML, Excel format invented while he was still at 5D. The ITU department has managed it, and IFC has many problems. We won't go into too much detail now and then. Unfortunately, we have to switch to closed BIM. And with closed BIM, it's about access to data. We pay, always have access to data, whether it's through the Autodesk Cloud or via thousands of tools that run Autodesk Cloud in the background. The customers don't know that they are essentially paying to Autodesk this one euro for each transaction for the conversion of data. And, but yes, we live like this. The CAD vendors who love BIM, the CAD draftsmen, they now have this abbreviation of BIM for which of course you now get more in salary and then the authorities can also there justify work. But business itself has no idea what BIM is today. Of course, for assistance, there is now BIM bomb consulting, which is supposed to explain how this flow works, different tools, APIs, and what does that look like? This is a Finnish company with 10,000 employees and making decisions. That means we need to go from point A to B, come across many closed formats and tools, including open BIM and closed BIM. One of those that are actually very closed, the idea. We still have, except here, we need only open data and open tools. Larger companies are also joining in. We also planned a few. Years ago, I spoke with a huge company like Barclays or Postbank. I can't mention the name Commerce Bank, but back then they already said, guys, we need no APIs or no closed solutions or open BIM, closed BIM. We need open data and open source. If you work for us, for large companies, then we only need open data and open source. Now, even governments are getting involved, for example, in Switzerland before uh, it was decided this month that public institutions will now only use open source uses. And in Northern European countries, they now only use open source for public contracts. Okay, the problem now is we have the open data around CAD and BIM, but how can we open them now? The same problems are also faced by other industries. 30 years ago, people only worked with Microsoft. Today, we have Linux, Android. Everyone, servers now run on Linux or Excel. 30 years ago, you could only use Microsoft products open. Today, we don't worry about where we open Excel, just like in 2001, browser. We are now working not only with Internet Explorer, but also probably with Chrome. Even in media, we use JPEG or PNG format, open formats. The same was true in the construction industry 20 years ago. Back then, there was the AutoCAD product. Actually, Autodesk did not develop it, but bought by Mike Riddle in Denver. And AutoCAD itself is just a CAD drawing program. And for that, they are building a marketplace. They also bought a language from a startup called AutoLisp. Later, VisualLisp was also acquired by a startup. 
And with the tools, one could create various plugins, tools, and apps so that many use cases can be operated in AutoCAD. And of course, there were many companies that said, guys, yes, DWG is nice, but maybe we can somehow create access without asking Autodesk. And then one of them was Markorp. This is a screenshot from a website in 1996 where Markorp is making jokes about Autodesk. Autodesk was on our site 600 times in half a year. Markorp developed the SDK for DWG back then. And they were the first to say, guys, if you want to get data from AutoCAD, you don't need to ask Autodesk. And of course, Autodesk then acquired Markup under the umbrella from IntelliCAD. Later, Autodesk wanted to buy it. In 96, it didn't work out. The anti-monopoly lawyers from IntelliCAD complained about this in court. And then the products went to Microsoft. Went to Microsoft in the 97. That was too much for this SDK WorldCAD. They didn't understand why it is used. Therefore, the guys from IntelliCAD have further called 14 CAD vendors and said, guys, everyone now pays 25,000 euros. That was Intergraph. PTC, SolidWorks, and other CAD vendors. Pay each 25,000 and we will establish the Open DWG Alliance. In 1998, the Open DWG Alliance was founded under the names of 17 major CAD vendors. And they also wrote an article in the Washington Post back then about Autodesk's monopoly in 1998. I wrote another article about the whole story, which came from data and construction industry. If someone wants to understand where the SDK comes from and open data, there is in this article describes it well, but the main thing is we now have open data. Since 1995, we have we now have open DWG since 2008, DGN and Navisworks since 2015, and now Rayway since 2017. And of course, Autodesk fought against the Open DWG Alliance at that time, had encrypted the product several times, meaning that the AutoCAD product was encrypted multiple times so that the guys from the Open DWG Alliance wouldn't have it so easy access to data. And then in 2006, Autodesk went to court and said, guys, you cannot use our DWG in your product name. The court has ruled against Autodesk. And in 2008 in California, they said, no, now everyone is allowed. But it took another 15 years. Autodesk fought against the Open DBG Alliance. So now all major companies, without exceptions, who use these SDKs from various software houses like Open Design Alliance to gain access to create closed data, that means they are not using any BIM IFC plugins, cloud or BIM 360. They use SDK to convert data from closed formats into open formats that you need. SQL, XML, JLTF, USD, or whatever you need. Are there only three houses that provide something like this? SDK stands for Software Development Kit to reverse engineer data from closed systems. For formats, there is Open Design Alliance, CAD Exchanger, TechSoft, which are European American houses, but 99% of the entire development happens in the East. And now, who is the customer at Open Design, for example, or CAD Exchange, Airbus, Apple, General Electric, Hyundai, Lufthansa, Volvo Plus, 20000 companies, that is CAD Exchange or Open Design Alliance is more about the construction industry. All CAD houses are included without exception. All Plan, Graphisoft, Microsoft, HP, the Brixton system, Bentley, actually all Siemens, and they all use the Open DWG Alliance and they pay 200 to 300,000 euros per year to buy these SDKs and to be a strategic member there to be an alliance. This alliance is a non-profit organization registered in America. There are another page from Open Design Alliance where you can also see which companies worldwide use these SDKs. There are officially 2,000 companies, and I think you can find them from Stuttgart. Only 20, that means they don't need BIM, no plugin, no APIs. But no one says that. For example, Tecla has been using this since 2023. Tecla now imports Revit into SketchUp. You have to imagine what a SketchUp is. Import from Revit into SketchUp since 2023. Graphisoft also does this with ODA SDK. Import from Revit into Archicad since 2020. Just like Bentley and even Autodesk now uses since 2020 Open Design IFC SDK to export data from Revit to IFC. This is an official slide, slide from Autodesk University 2020. This is from the software development system of Autodesk. Say Autodesk is now suddenly investing in IFC, and this is all with Open Design Alliance, which have no idea how to export data from Revit to IFC, no joke. And then you now use this Open Design Alliance SDK to convert data from Revit to IFC from various products into IFC export, although the IFC is not an active format for any CAD product. That means, without exceptions, all CAD houses used for interoperability, either ODA SDK or CAD Exchange SDK, and no one uses IFC. And Autodesk itself saw, okay, Revit 2017 opened that up in 2020. Autodesk officially joins the Open Design Alliance. In general, they have been fighting for 15 years against SDK, initially against AutoCAD SDK. Now, 
they themselves use the same SDK to extract data, creating Revit interoperability. What does that mean? The larger firms that sell us BIM, small people like medium-sized entrepreneurs, you need BIM closed BIM API plugins, but they themselves only use SDK. That means we now have these hundreds of systems that we need to connect. And now suddenly, thanks to SDK, our data is open. This means we have to, don't worry about API and this question now, how to access the data, they are open. And then we no longer work model centric like before, where we had thousands of dependencies, had CAD products, API packages, but now we work data centric. And that means we don't need a BIM manager or BIM engineer. We work normally with open data, like the people in other industries work. We use the same tools as the people use in other industries. And we don't need new concepts or specialists for that because today works closed BIM and open BIM, BIM manager, BIM coordinator arrives 9 a.m., opens a Celebri design, no idea, imports a Revit or IFC, extracts an Excel, continues, speckle even further. And then at some point around 5 p.m., Excel extracts a PDF. In all other industries, people work with RTL or ELT or OLAP where there are no people. We work with open data. We have open tools or open source tools, and we can convert the data into our required formats, JSON, XML, USD or CPM, Excel. Then you automatically perform data quality checks. This also only with three columns, not with BIP or no idea IDs format. You don't need that preparations. The larger houses and what does our world of medium-sized companies look like? We need use cases here on the right in yellow rectangles, which means we are creating the documents chart graph, or we bind the data to some systems and our data is linked. They are also in a simple form. And for us, it's not about any complications, use cases, but for us, it's usually about four or five functions. Grouping quantity takeoff, that means we group the data, we filter it, we multiply columns and multiply a few rows, but that also happens with SAP, MySQL, Oracle, Pandas, or in Revit, IFC. It's the same, these five, six functions, main function. Now, the question is, which formats do we use to handle the data group and filter. We now have all project data in these formats. That means we have the same geometry or the same properties of attributes from all elements in all formats equally in this site, in CPXML, in GLTF, in USD format, or in IFC, or in Excel plus collateral format. All project data are the same. I have compared all of this different parameters, for example, how it fits for 4D, 5D, or if there are any dependencies or how it works with ChatGPT, you can also find the table later at the link. Let's not go deep now. In general, we have the main formats, Nevisworks, IFC, CPI, XML, of course, GLTF, USD, and what do you use? Even Autodesk has now formed a new alliance. Before uh, this year, an alliance for the open USD format has been founded together with NVIDIA, Adobe, and Pixar, and Apple. So it doesn't work with IFC, but now suddenly with USD format, which is from... Pixar was actually invented, and now Autodesk loves open source. It's all under one roof by the Linux Foundation. This is a video, you can also find it on YouTube from a year ago, the guys, representatives from larger firms have discussed USD's future. Pixar says that the PDF, which you can then open anywhere later, and then the Autodesk representative says, yes, we do now in all our products. This means the journey is heading towards Omniverse, Omniverse, which is a platform from NVIDIA where you can train robots and run entire simulations. And NVIDIA is investing so much money there. That means all KUKA, Worth, Hilti, all the companies, they will train their robots on this platform Omniverse. And they tell us, okay, the USD format is sufficient. That means, of course, for images, we have JPEG. Nobody uses Photoshop PNG format or GIMP format like here in our construction industries. Nobody uses in video transmission, any closed formats. Everyone uses open formats like MPEG, MP3, or for us, it can also be CPEG, XML, or Excel. Otherwise, even all German companies that use CPI XML. All major construction companies here in the German-speaking region, Strabag, Zublin, Hochtief, Implenia, Wolfenmuller, Autobahn, Deutsche Bahn, all used for their 4D and 5D use cases, CPM Excel format, CPI XML is flat like USD format. It's all flat geometry and all parameters are like in a two-dimensional table. And in the end, we work with Excel. 99% of the work in Solibri, Decide, Archicad, or even Revit is not done clue somewhere. This is only about Excel, about this two-dimensional world. That doesn't mean not only the financial sector is based on change, but naturally the construction sector is as well, it works only with Excel. And this is also confirmed by a survey on Stack Overflow, which is the largest IT forum in the world is. Then one asks afterwards in which databases one works, and that almost all, about 90% of all specialists who work with structured databases, PostgreSQL, MySQL, work with Oracle. That means even if you exchange data between the systems, between Postgres, Oracle, or between SQLite and Microsoft SQL, you exchange 
all of this through CSV, through Excel format, the two-dimensional format, doing the same. We at Data Driven Construction, all formats IFC, Revit, DWG can also be used as two-dimensional. Display the table and then differentiate our data from databases like Oracle, Marriott, or not my school. We have a two-dimensional table data frame where the elements are in the rows. All properties or all characteristics of all elements are in division. And then what does it give us? That, for example, this is an example. I have here 10,000 different projects from Revit, from IFC, different versions packed into a table, 10,000 different projects into a single table with 30,000 columns. Why this is the case, we will come, we'll get to that later. But in general, what use cases do we have? We have the models Revit, IFC, and we need some groups from the model in our system. For this, we usually provide quantity takeoff or any tables with volumes of different groups that we later use in our documents, Excel or dashboards or there, where we need them. And for that, we need tools. We only have open BIM and closed BIM available. And now we also have the converter SDK and the results across all tools are the same, meaning we get the same table when we do quantity takeoff. This grouping of elements, we get the same results, but with what effort? In IFCJS, for example, you need 100 Lines of code, 150 lines of code for this table. Speckle needs 100 lines of code. In Revit, 40 lines of code on this small table with volumes of groups in the category walls, for example, to come. When working with SDK or with two-dimensional tables, you need just one line of code for comparison, one line of code against 150 with IFCGS. Why is that? Because we have this ontology, the tables of tables classifiers from Revit, IFC, where you can work with user interface or with APIs from the very bottom to the top up to our elements that climbs one, cut off this branch and then convert it all into a table at the end. Because the systems, they only process the tables, they can't handle our strange classifiers to deal with. This corresponds to the normal development of all other industries as well. We come from unstructured data where we used to work like AutoCAD, where you didn't understand any logic, why the data is stored. Now let's move on to weekly structured data, semi-structured data that is xml json or revit ifc but in the end we work later like everyone else specialists in all other economic sectors with structured data with structured data these structured data look like data frames apache parquet or the most popular form of data in the world today and now the data is used in various tools including omniverse in millions of tools for example just one example is pandas it is used nine million times a day downloaded this is just a library downloaded nine million times in a single day downloaded and this pandas library accepts various formats as input and now including our ifc and revit and as export we can now export all kinds of things that we need and that is the comparison of pandas with OpenBeam. all of these are open libraries open source but pandas is downloaded nine million times a day and is the most popular is the library in open in the bim world if copen shell is downloaded 600 times a day and this whole world of communities or of engineers like here bim cluster bim open bim Speckle, no idea what, Revit. All of this is 10,000 times less than the world that works with Pandas, works with these two-dimensional tables. In other industries, data analytics, data manager, and big data machine learning, all of which work with Python or comparable tools, and we now have access to the tools. But if we have SDK, we convert the data into open formats, and then we have access to this huge world of libraries. That means now, to perform these five functions, we don't need hundreds of lines of code like with OpenBIM, or closed BIM, but now we need two lines of code to extract data from Revit, IFC to data frame to convert. And then we need one more line of code, just one line of code for quantity takeoff to create a table or filter or group data or a pie chart or a bar chart, create. All of this is just one line of code or to check data against regular expressions or what you need there or to create a PDF. That is only 10 lines of code. Creating an Excel is two lines of code. Creating a PDF is just 10 lines of code. And now comes Goldman Sachs with his prediction. In 2024, they published a paper where they said 37% of engineers in our engineers' architectural world is being replaced by AI. And how will that happen? Now we have, instead of 100, we first write one or two lines of code, and now we replace this one line of code with a sentence in ChatGPT, for example, because DataFrame is such a native format for ChatGPT. ChatGPT actually only works with DataFrame because very well trained on DataFrames on these two-dimensional tables, and now you can achieve the same results with just one set. The, this means we don't need to learn Python or new libraries now. We just write in Spanish or in English or in German. Please group the data in the category column. Summarize the volume column for me, then create a chart graph and export it for me as PDF. This is all just for five, ten sentences, and there we come to the result. 
These are real examples. Revit as input in ChatGPT will be purely as a data frame. Please create a bar chart for me. Or in DWG, please make these lines from a layout for me. Or with IFC, we can check the data simply with a few sentences and we don't even need Python anymore. We convert the closed data into open formats. That is clear. That is our future. Do we want that or, right, we will work with open data and open tools later, unfortunately for some. But in the end, when we have open data, we also don't need to learn a new programming language. We are now working with ChatGPT and ChatGPT not only delivers the output, but also delivers the code. The code is also used for pipelines. That means we have written the sentences, but in the end, we get the sentences as well as the code. And from the code, we create the pipeline and now, instead of using these strange classifiers, we structure the data, bring the in structured form, and then with the help of ChatGPT, we set up pipelines. These pipelines will be now used almost everywhere, just not now in the construction industry, unfortunately, but maybe future. In general, we work, we do not start with Revit or with IFC in general. Use cases that start with the parameterization of tasks, our parameterization of, we then create tasks in Excel or in a database from an Excel spreadsheet like Goldbeck does, for example, Goldbeck now creates halls or parking garages from Excel. One throws the Excel into Dynamo and then hop, you have 80% of the project done. And then the remaining, you spend 20% of your time over two months, but you create a Revit file from Excel. Germans do this too. Railway, Deutsche Bahn creates platforms or entire railways from Excel thanks to Provi projects in Revit. That means we first described use cases parameterized into a stored in Excel or a database we then automatically create 80% of the work in Revit. Then thanks to SDK, we get access to the open data from Revit, which we can later review and then throw it out again as a document or as a PDF or I don't know, an Excel file. Life is short, use Python. It's also written on my back. On the DDC site, you can find examples of how to work with ChatGPT, what a pipeline is, and I myself create free ones, tools for people around the world so they can open data in Excel and even without Revit. This means you can import Revit, DWG, IFC without installing Autodesk or any. With products from Autodesk, you import BIM 360, then Revit into Excel, and then edit everything normally as a table in Excel or in ChatGPT or with Jupyter Notebook or with Python, the mean software that has no future and the companies that do not work with data today. Unfortunately, those who work might have to fear for their existence later. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Whether it's CAD or BIM, it's all about data. And whoever collects data might have a future. That confirms it. Larry Fink, CEO of BlackRock, also says AI has enormous potential. AI and robotics are changing everything. We work the way we build. That was said last year in Berlin. It changes how we build ourselves. But even he and the managers of CAD houses are not interested in productivity in the construction industry itself. And that is unfortunately somewhat strange. This is Vanguard. BlackRock holds shares in Autodesk and Bentley, which might only cost around 10 billion. At the same time, BlackRock and Vanguard hold shares in Strabag and Vinci. And perhaps BlackRock says, please Autodesk, make the data open, then maybe we can. Strabag would benefit much more from it than you. But unfortunately, the financial companies who are investing today in this CAD world, which today is this closed environment for us, creates. And I have also written a book about pipeline, open data and open source, like what all this might look like in the future. There are 80 different topics and 40 use cases from 4D, 5D to calculations on carbon footprint, such as approximately 210 different images. Now, I collect feedback if someone is interested like this. Data is at the very bottom. I am a data miner and we, somehow they have to pump it up to the top. Do we need BIM for that? Maybe not.